Welcome to this edition of Eighth and I'll tell you how I got better. I'm glad to be here. But a mission to deliver it. Well, I think that we're, we're talking, we're going to talk about everybody's. Arkansas is the second highest prescriber. Welcome to AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Thank you for joining us. Today I have with me Dr. Ashley Clausen. She is an assistant professor in the Center for the Study of Tobacco in the Department of Health Behavior and Health Education at UAMS. Dr. Clausen, thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Robin. I'm very happy to be here. So tell us about the UAMS College of Public Health's new pilot project. Absolutely. So I am leading a pilot study that is funded through the Center for Research, Health and Social Justice, which is a NIH funded center here at UAMS. And for my pilot project, we're really trying to understand how to disrupt intergenerational patterns of tobacco and nicotine use among Arkansas families. And so how we want to do this is to ask parents and caregivers who use tobacco or nicotine, and that's any type of tobacco or nicotine, whether it's cigarettes or cigars or snooze, smokeless, vapes, um, and their eight to 10 year old children, we wanna know from their perspective, what do they think is influencing children in their communities using tobacco and nicotine? Um, and also their thoughts on the only available tobacco use prevention intervention that is specifically for kids who have a parent who uses tobacco. So we need to know how to update that intervention to make it relevant for today. So that's what we're hoping to learn from families. And is this pilot research study fit into a larger grant? It does, it does. So for this study, we are really um, trying to know um, how we need to change and update smoke-free kids. So as I mentioned, well, it was originally published in the 90s, so it only focused on preventing smoking, cigarette smoking in kids and only included parents who used um, cigarettes. But we've come a long way since then. Uh, we have a lot more tobacco products that kids are using, that grown-ups are using, and it, it needs to be updated too. So it was created in the 90s, so it's a little outdated and it was only available in print. So for this pilot study, we wanna understand how do we need to update smoke-free kids to be responsive to Arkansas families, especially our rural families, to be um, appealing to modern families and to also address all tobacco use. And so once we have this information, we wanna use it and we're applying for a larger grant where we actually update smoke-free kids to address all tobacco use, to be available online and in print for some of our families who don't have access to the internet. And then we wanna see, does it work? Um, so we know it worked before, but now we wanna see, does it work for Arkansas families? Can it prevent tobacco use, all types of tobacco use among Arkansas kiddos who have a parent who uses tobacco? So that, that's where we're going. So it, really at the forefront of this is to disrupt generational tobacco use. That's right, Robin. So what we know based on a long history of research is that Children who have a parent or caregiver who uses tobacco are more likely to start using tobacco themselves and are also more likely to start using tobacco earlier. So they'll start using tobacco earlier than other kids who don't have some, a caregiver or parent who uses tobacco. So what happens is we see the same families over and over again who are burdened by tobacco and tobacco caused diseases. And that pattern that we call intergenerational tobacco use is um, also stronger among rural families. So rural kiddos um, have more exposure to some of these risk factors for starting to use tobacco. So our, our goal is absolutely to help parents who use tobacco to feel comfortable and have the skills to talk to their own children about tobacco. That way they can prevent tobacco use in their kids. And what's great is this is even if they're not in a place where they are ready to quit using tobacco themselves, the parent. Now that's, that's what we hope for, but for some family, for some parents, um, that's really hard to do. So we wanna give them a tool and something they can use with their kids while they are trying to quit smoking or using tobacco themselves. And what is the target group? Is there a specific age demographic? 
It is. Uh, so for the kiddos, we are looking for a parent or, or a legal guardian of a child who is eight to 10 years old. And the caregiver just has to currently use any type of tobacco, like I mentioned earlier. And the reason that we chose eight to 10, I know that seems like very narrow, um, is one, because that is the age range targeted by this prevention intervention. And also because what we're hoping to do is intervene with kiddos before they start using tobacco. So we want to change um, their susceptibility to starting to use tobacco. So we're starting earlier with the goal of trying to prevent that first puff or first use. And you touched on this a little bit about rural communities. Is the project focusing on rural Arkansans? We are. So we are um, very purposefully recruiting out of four counties in the Arkansas Delta. So we are currently recruiting out of Phillips, Lee, Chico, and Deshea counties. And the reason that I chose these counties is uh, for several reasons. One is because they have some of the poorest health outcomes in our state, including some of the lower lowest life expectancy in our state. They are so also uh, are highly rural. Um, they have high rates of poverty. They have um, great representation of both uh, Black and African American families and non-Hispanic white families. And they also have some of the highest grown-up or adult smoking rates in our state. So we're purposefully recruiting out of these counties to make sure that our intervention is responsive to some of the families hit hardest by tobacco in our state. How does a family become a part of the program? It's a great question. And we are trying to make it as easy as we can. So first, what they would do is complete a very brief screener that is online. It takes one to two minutes. This would be the parent. And if they are eligible from there, we would contact the family to let them know they're eligible. And then parents and kids would do a few things. Parents would get a survey and kids would get a separate survey. That survey can be, be completed online by themselves. It can be completed over the phone with help from us, or we can come to those communities and administer the survey in person. And then after the parents and kids complete the surveys, then we are gonna mail them smoke-free kids. So we're gonna mail them that intervention in its original form. And then what we'll do is we'll follow up with families and ask them to do an interview or a focus group with us. And again, it would be separate. We'll have parents in one group and kids in another. And we'll ask them, what do we need to change? What do we need to do to make it so this would work for you? Uh, what needs to be added? And what do you think it should be included to make it digital and print? And then after that is complete, uh, we do have incentives uh, for to help compensate for the time taken away from other things for parents and kids. And what is the time frame? You're, you're recruiting now? We are, yes, we are recruiting now and um, are very excited to build um, any and all partnerships to help us really get the word out about our study and to make sure that um, caregivers and parents who use tobacco know this is going on and get linked to our study. So yes, we are recruiting now. And you're trying to learn how to update that Smoke Free Kids program. Uh, what is the goal here? And is it going into a larger scale project? Yes. So the original Smoke Free Kids, as I mentioned, um, it's wonderful because it works. And what it looks like is it is five printed booklets that get mailed to the caregiver. And they really focus on the parent and child doing activities together with the goal being that it helps, it guides the parents on how to talk to their children about tobacco. And it helps parents with what we know sometimes parents who use tobacco face as barriers to talking to their kids about tobacco, which is feeling guilty. Um, so I don't wanna to talk to my child about tobacco because I use tobacco, I feel guilty about that. Or I feel like a hypocrite, right? I don't wanna to talk to my child about tobacco because I feel like a hypocrite, it's not gonna work anyway. So this really builds, each booklet builds on teaching the parent how to talk to their child in general and then building on further communication where the parent is by the end talking to the child about, this is why I started using tobacco. This is why it's been really hard for me to quit. 
Um, and I don't want you to use tobacco. And then it builds steps on building other skills in the child, such as uh, refusal skills. So the child learning, what do I do if a friend or someone else offers me tobacco? What do I do if I find tobacco somewhere? And also um, other skill sets that in the long run just help a child to remain tobacco and nicotine free. So that is what the intervention looks like. It's very interactive. It's very fun for parents and kids. Uh, it's not just a you sit down and you read it. There's games, there's activities, there's the child is doing interviews with the parent. And so we love all those things. Uh, but what we need to know is we have to update it. Um, to address more than just cigarettes. We have to update it to make sure it's responsive to rural families and to families regardless of their different and varying backgrounds. And we wanna make it so that the most people possible can access it. So that's what we wanna see. How can it, what should it look like if it's available online and in print? Because we don't wanna take away the imprint um, for some of our families who don't have internet access. So we'll keep the core active ingredients of the intervention, as we say, and just work to make it more appealing and available. It sounds very intentional and purposeful. It is, it is very pur purposeful and intentional, yes. And I think the goal is really making sure that we are working with parents and caregivers who use tobacco to empower them and really help them to overcome the barriers they face and to help them to understand that they can help prevent tobacco use in their children and to create an intervention that is highly disseminable, disseminable, that's a hard word to say, um, to families across our state, whether they're in our most rural areas or in our urban areas. And one last question, you, you're looking for community partners. What does that mean? What are you looking for? We are. Uh, so especially for anyone who lives or knows uh, families in those four counties that I mentioned, we are looking for community partnerships to help link families to our study. And I want to say, Robin, that we in, in my lab truly understand and value that partnerships should benefit everyone involved. So we also look forward to learning what how we could help our community partners. And that might be healthcare providers in these counties who could give families flyers. It could be healthcare providers who know that some of their parents use tobacco, that they could say, hey, there's this study going on. Here's a flyer. I think it, you could give a, give a call, find out if it's a good fit for you. We have faith-based organizations, schools, just if someone is a community leader or you just live in one of these communities and want to get involved. So we have no restrictions on what who a community partner can be, but we just we know that um, it will take a village to help disrupt intergenerational patterns of tobacco use in Arkansas. So we want to build that village now. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for talking about this important project. I hope that not only do you have a lot of interest in, from families to be participating, but community project partners um, that will connect and as well as support it. So thank you for all you do. Thank you so much, Robin, for having me. And that's it for this episode of AFMC-TV. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.